students. And I'm a, a first year PhD student here at the Gaylord College. And um, I actually uh, personally was very interested about this idea, the recent uh, uprising in the Middle East, and the reason, main drivers behind it, because we know it's poverty, inequality, and security. Uh, what are the reasons behind this uprising? And what is the role of media on uh, this mass uprising? And see, uh, activism. So I thought the best name is Dr. Joshua Landis, and he's a um, professor in the Middle Eastern Studies, and he's uh, teaching modern Middle Eastern history and politics. And he writes uh, SyriaComment.com. It's the daily newsletter on Syrian politics that attracts some 50,000 readers a month. It's widely read by officials in Washington, Europe, and Syria. And uh, Dr. Land is the freaking analyst on TV and, rich and on radio. And he appears recently on the Labour News, News Hour, Charlie Rose Show, and CNN, and Al Jazeera, NPR, BBC, and he is widely quoted regularly in leading newspapers, including New York Times and Wall Street Journal. He has a very good, a very strong educational background. Actually, he has a master's in Harvard and a PhD in Princeton. And besides his strong educational background, he has tremendous experience in the Arab world. He stayed uh, over 14 years in the Middle East, and he speaks fluently Arabic and French. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Joshua Lam. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Nora, for organizing this and inviting me here and the, to the graduate students of the Journalism School and, um, and everybody for coming. I, I want to say also before I begin that uh, Mohammed Musli is here, who is our brand new professor from Jordan. It's not so brand new, but he just arrived a few days ago because uh, visa problems have been holding him up for over a semester. And, uh, but he just came from Jordan when all this was beginning to happen uh, in, in uh, Tunisia and so forth. So we'll, I hope we get some insight from him. Thank you. But um, let me, uh, I want to talk about three short things and then open it up for discussion. One is the role of the media, which is what I was brought here to say something about. And it is extremely important. The, uh, it is about the media. Now, of course, it's about a lot more than the media. The media has enabled this to happen, and, and it's worked in new ways, and it's confounded the secret police in all these countries. But there's an economic dimension that is extremely important. And then, of course, there's the humiliation, the, the, the political dimension of wanting to be, have dignity, about dignity. And you see this in all the blogs. It's about dignity, and they're picking on bloggers, young people who've been arrested and humiliated by the police. And this is, this is the spark that sets off all of these uh, different uprisings in many ways. It's sort of, sort of a common theme. It's the dignity and wanting to have a, a role in their own future, in their destiny. So let me start with media. Clearly, um, I just got off the phone about five minutes. I was a little bit late here because the uh, correspondent from La Repubblica in Rome, who, the Middle East correspondent, who I know well and have, have talked with for many years, had called and said, was asking about Syrian bloggers because she's trying to do a story on Syrian bloggers. There's just a guy arrested yesterday, Khair Abu uh, And the blogosphere has taken up his cause. Nobody had, not many people had heard of him before, but now he's on everybody's blog, his picture is there, and there, the Syrian blogosphere is trying to drum up indignation about this arrest. And, um, and it comes on the heels of some other arrests of young people who had blogs. So you can begin to see a little tidal wave, and it's attracting, of course everybody's wondering, is Syria going to be next? Um, my own blog, if you look at Google Analytics, hit a big spike two weeks ago because there was supposed to be a day of rage in Syria after the Egyptian and Tunisian model. And everybody was called to go and make a, have a demonstration in front of the parliament building. Nobody showed up. But they showed up on my site. 
because they were looking to see if something was happening. And the journalists had come in particular, but everybody was watching to see would there be anything, and they were just trawling around, clicking on everything that had to do with Syria, I presume. And uh, um, in the lead up to that, I was on Al Jazeera, CNN, CBS News, on a whole bunch of things. They, the NPR and so forth, because all the journalists were waiting to see if Syria, and in particular the American journalists want to know if Syria is going to fall, because so far it's all been American friends that have fallen, and they were dying for Iran or Syria to take it, and, and that would put one down in the American camp. So far it's the Iranians and Syrians who are clapping all the time, because it looks like it's the pro-Americans who are, who are really being, uh, and America's being thrown on its heels. Uh, and is in quite some confusion because its friends have been badly hurt. Um, okay, what is the role? The role of Facebook, the role of social media, YouTube, um, Twitter has been tremendous. I'll get to Al Jazeera, which is really big. But the secret police have dominated these societies and these governments for 40 years. There has been almost no change. And they've been able to do it because you've had a model, a model of left-wing parties and Muslim brotherhood. And you can see, and these are old, the old school organizations. People have to meet in each other's houses. They have to call on the phone. They have to have an assembly. It's against the law to assemble in almost all these countries over a certain number of people. In Syria, it's five, without getting permission from the government. Of course, people do it all the time. But if they don't like what you're doing, they have an excuse to arrest you and to harass you if you assemble. But they figure out who you are very quickly because they're listening to the phone, they're following, they're investigating other people and saying who are your friends and who did you meet and so forth. So they can, they, if you have a six or seven month lead time, they can figure out who you are. And that's the old model. The new model is something that the secret police don't have, don't, don't know how to deal with because it's big. There are thousands of people joining in. Come on in, you guys. I think there's a chair or two over here. There's one over here. And uh, there's a new, this new model of young people who are not known to the state, who have never been arrested, who aren't traditional opposition. Who have been using the social media and that, that don't really know each other because they don't have to actually meet in physical space. And so when people start pouring on the streets in Cairo, the police were taken completely by surprise. And they didn't know how to track it, and they didn't know how to meet these people. And so many of the Muhammadah, the secret police, don't speak English. And a lot of these social media people are doing it in English. It's rudimentary English, but they're communicating in English. The bloggers in Syria were all in English until about three, four years ago, the, the Arabic blogosphere started really opening up. Um, but it took, it took uh, Blogger and others a number of years to translate it to Arabic and become user-friendly in Arabic. But by that time, there had already become this world of English bloggers. And the Syrian secret police don't care about English language blogs so much because they know that the masses can't read them. And so they allow this sort of elite of young people to go ahead and write in English. And you don't get so much attention, partly because they can't read the English. So it's, it takes a lot more a lot more work on their part. Um, so that's been extraordinary. And we've what, been doing this now for three weeks, almost four weeks, one month, and three dictators, or two and a half, have fallen. We were still waiting <laughs> for Gaddafi to, uh, to finish. Uh, and it looks like he's, you know, he's hanging on, but, but he can't hang on forever. This has just gone way beyond what he can do. But, but that's extraordinary, and that's because of the media.